Now, another technique you have at your disposal is inline templates. And especially if you build traditional server-side applications, like with Laravel, uh, I think you'll actually get a lot of use out of this. So sometimes you'll find that for a particular page, you need some behavior associated with it, but it's not a single page application, not anything like that. It just has some behavior, right? So in those cases, what you might do is create a view specific component, and it's just a, it's a one-off component. It's not meant to be reused. It's only appropriate for that one page, and that's okay. So maybe you have a progress page, right? This uh, details the progress through a course or a project. The hard part is if you wanna do that, but still have your HTML nested within here, such as your progress through this course, you know, just to be quick, is completion rate. Yeah, you just want something like that. Uh, maybe the JavaScript is determining it dynamically. Maybe it's updating that value based upon completing a video, like you might see with a video series. Yeah, you want this inline. You don't want it stored in your JavaScript. But the problem is, well, right now, let's just go through the errors. We haven't even created this view yet, so it's gonna fail. If we open this up, can't find completion rate and unknown custom element. Okay, let's create that now. So we're gonna have a new component called progress view. And generally, there, there's no convention you have to follow. Uh, I tend to name my view specific components with name dash view, but you can do anything you want here. Anyways, let's set up our data and we're going to return uh, completion rate and we'll just default to zero for the time being. Okay, so now if I give it a refresh, it's still going to fail. Failed to mount component. So yeah, what's happening is view expects a template, but we didn't provide one here like we often do. Instead, we're gonna use an inline template. We're gonna tell view anything between the tags should be considered as the template. We do that by adding this inline template attribute. Now, if I come back and give it a refresh, there you go, it's working. So maybe, we could do something like this. Like we set it to 50%, come back, refresh, and now it's working. This is a really good way to add interactivity uh, and reactivity, but also behavior to single pages. And, and, and sometimes that's a big thing. Not everything is some generic component that can be used anywhere. Sometimes it's just one area of one page that you do want to make dynamic. Uh, and, and traditionally with regular JavaScript, that's always confusing because where do you put it? Uh, and often people will put it in a main.js file, and that file ends up being thousands of lines long and nobody can reason about it. So this at least makes it quite a bit cleaner. Now, if you do need behavior, like, I don't know, uh, a button or something, maybe this is associated with a video or something, and when you click on it, it's gonna update the completion rate. So we could say completion rate plus equals 10, just to hard code it. You know, we still have all of the interactivity that we would normally expect. But now do remember, the, the rules for a template are still true here. So notice I don't have a single root element. I have two siblings. You wanna make sure, and in fact in view two, I think it'll squawk. Let's open up Chrome DevTools. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna want you to do that. So let's add a div. Yeah, we're gonna have a single root element. Anyways, if we now refresh, update the completion rate, now it bumps to 60. So I would say in general, uh, be, be thoughtful when using these sorts of things. Uh, the view documentation would say that it makes your templates a little harder to reason about. And uh, generally they recommend storing your template within uh, your JavaScript, or you also learn about .view files that makes it a little bit cleaner. But again, for server side applications, I think you may find a lot of use out of this. So be thoughtful, but it's a good tool to reach for when you need it.